All right, it's Monday. Let's go. It's early. I'm getting to the gym. I got a long day today if I can get it all in, but it might it should be about a $700 day, so that's good. This week is shaping up to be pretty solid, so hopefully I can break 2500 uh, maybe even 3000 in revenue for me after, after cost dollars. That'd be great if I could. Anyways, uh, when I first started this channel, I said I wouldn't get political. I'm not going to get political, so when I talk about what I'm about to talk about, it isn't for the purpose of political discussion and or trying to, and I apologize too, I have my dome lights on because it's dark right now as I'm driving, but the purpose of this video isn't to make a political statement to the right or the left. Obviously, I have, you know, my compass, my personal beliefs, but I just wanted to speak to something that I'm seeing for myself that, that is very real and is something that I think my generation and subsequent generations are going to have to really wrestle with. So, you guys already know if you've watched my channel that I did a, a video on income inequality and why it's important, why it's good. If you haven't seen it, go check that out. But um, I wanted to touch on the, the real fate of people in my generation, millennial generate the, the millennial generation, excuse me, where the separation of wealth, as far as the vast majority of millennials struggling and not really being successful financially in comparison to really what will amount to be a handful of millennials at the end of their working life. Because while we have time, while we're young and while we're working, we can change on a dime. It does require that we change ourselves, which in my experience is the most difficult thing for anyone to do. But the reality of the wealth disparity in the millennial generation as it sits right now and then as it will be when we are 60, 65 years old, here's the reason why. Our generation and then every subsequent generation after that, but our generation specifically, when I was a child, we played outside. We still had, you know, regular phones that plugged into walls. Uh, internet was dial up. You had to unplug the phone to plug into the computer so you could get online. When downloading first started to happen, it took like an hour and a half to two hours to download, get jiggy with it. So, I mean, it, my childhood was very much analog. It was very much um, CDs, very much VHS, right? And then as I graduated high school and started to move in my, into my 20s, you started to see the transformation from a very analog sort of rotary type existence to a digital one. MySpace exploded, then came Facebook, then came Craigslist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. From there, it just kept progressing Twitter. Uh, came out, I think, in 2006, 2008. I'm not really sure. But anyhow, as, as our digital and technological experience has increased, it has inadvertently created a situation where as people, we don't have to do very much to get any type of reward or satisfaction. Now, Mer keep in mind the re the reward and or satisfaction is very short term it's very low brow it's like candy it's not you know uh, substantive it's fast it's sweet you burn through it and then you want some more and it isn't good in the long run but because of our existence now and what we have at our fingertips I, I, I know a guy who last month, they spent close to two thousand dollars on going out to eat because of Grubhub and and uh, Uber Eats, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We, my wife and I, we've had months where we spent a lot of money going out to eat too. But what's interesting is that all of the money spent were all were all on delivery services, of food delivery services that brought it to them. Now that's awesome. The business is great. I'm happy for Grubhub. I'm happy for Uber Eats. That's fantastic. And that those individuals they got to work on their budgeting skills but the point is the accessibility to fast 
uh, meaningless fulfillment, that's the wrong word, meaningless satisfaction has never been higher. And what that means is that it will it takes great effort on the part of the individual to not get sucked in to that lifestyle, to that short-term gratification, short-term, well, I want it now, oh my God, and I want to eat what I want to eat, I want to do what I want to do, yeah. It's going to take great effort on the part of us as human beings to avoid that pitfall because it's just so easy to do. It's harder to get up in the morning and go work out. It's harder to go start a business. It's easy to sit at your desk job that you fucking hate, but you know the checks are coming in and everything's good. It's it's easier to do that. It's easier to do that than it is to go and forge your own path or get mentors and follow in their path. And never before has it been easier to just exist, to just do meaningless, mindless tasks, if you even want to call them that, for your existence that do nothing for you but just pass the time. And since that's the reality that millennials are in and every subsequent generation after that, because let's be honest, technology is only going to progress and in ways that aren't necessarily positive. Yes, we'll also have positive progressions of technology, but we're also going to have negative ones and or progressions of technology that are neutral, but that because of our human carnal selves and our really our unrighteous inner man, we will descend via the tool of the technological service into, you know, stupidity or chaos or just lasciviousness, whatever the case may be. The point is, is this, as this very easy, real reality of just kind of being placated and pacified exists and expands within humanity, you will see the emergence of the 20%. The 80-20 rule is always correct. 20% of any individuals in any industry at any job due to 80% of the work. That 80-20 rule will be magnified even more and those 80% that don't do shit are going to be broke fucking dicks. That's it. There's no way around it. It isn't because of some patriarchal meaning. It's not because of that. It's because at the end of the day, you get what you put in coupled with your wisdom and your shrewdness concerning your budgeting and where you put your money into. If you have people that aren't willing to work hard, that aren't willing to put themselves in an uncomfortable situation to build wealth, they believe it should be handed to them, given to them, they will not succeed. The 20%, the 20% are going to be hitting home run after home run. Boom. There's no pitch they can't hit. Why? Mainly just because they're doing it. They're just actually swinging. That's the main reason. Now, of that 20% that's succeeding, there's a, there, of that hot, so of the 20% that's actually getting after it of any generation, that 20%, of the 100% of that 20, 20% of that 100% will actually be far and above way better than the 20, than the original 20% that, that's just getting up and trying. But the fact of the matter is, guys, every day I meet people who are who have my level of intelligence uh, who are dyslexic like me some people have a disability whether they can't hear well they don't see very well uh, maybe they have a disability even physically but they've made the choice that they're gonna work as hard as they possibly can to get the greatest amount of wealth they can for themselves in a just and a uh, uh, ethical manner, but they, they're going to do everything they can to be as successful as they can. And, and strictly, strictly because of that choice, they are. Now, again, they aren't as successful as some, right? But they are successful. So as we go throughout this life, you're going to see we're going to see a shocking amount of poverty, a shocking amount of disparity, wealth disparity, not income, wealth disparity, simply because we have all of these mechanisms, all of these tools of, of corporate uh, media and uh, corporate uh, social media companies that just want to keep us on our couch, in our seat, doing nothing. Hey, don't get up. We'll bring it to you. Hey, hey you don't need to shop. We're going to recommend this for you. Hey, don't worry about don't worry about saving money. 
ah, you're okay. Don't worry about starting that job. Just stay where you're at. All of these tools th that these companies have to try to get our data and get our money, they aren't purposefully trying to make us couch potatoes, but it inadvertently does because w w when uh, that immediate want is facilitated so easily, it's difficult for us as humans, as, as living conscious beings, it's difficult for us to say, you know what? I, hold on, I need to stop. I gotta get up. I gotta walk today. I gotta run today. I gotta read the paper. I gotta do something. I gotta engage in a way that isn't just I want it. Give it to me. Uh, we. It's difficult. It's difficult to have that self-realization. It is. It's very hard. Uh, some of us get pushed into it, like myself. You know, I. I, I. I wasn't gonna be able to build wealth working customer service for an educational company. It just wasn't gonna happen. So. The point is, is this, wealth disparity will increase, not because of bad trade deals, that may be a part of it, not because of the falling uh, value of the dollar, although that sucks, but at the end of the day, wealth disparity will happen in the, in the millennial generation and in subsequent generations strictly because of a lack of effort. The 20% of millennials that are just willing to get up and go will shit on 80%, the remaining 80% that are too busy ordering Uber, too busy shopping on Amazon, too busy having all their immediate needs needs facilitated to actually get going. This is the reality of where we're at. Don't be that way. Don't do it. It doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve your children. It doesn't serve your spouse. It ultimately doesn't serve our nation. It ultimately doesn't serve the people in your community. The people in your community are actually benefited greatly when you are wealthy because that's more money you have to spend. That's, that, that's, that, that's more wealth that even if you're a hoarder of wealth, the fact that you have it is an option in the community for someone to possibly have an investment from you or again, you just spending money or whatever the case may be. It doesn't benefit the nation, the community, the family for you to do nothing or to do the bare minimum. Go out today hit one speed, go as hard as you can. And if you're a man, women can do this too, but if you're a man and you're struggling, what do I, what do I want to do with my life? Nah, stop all that. That's all fucking bullshit. That's a lie. Don't do what you feel passionate about. That's fucking stupid. Go start a business cleaning gutters. Go be a handyman and start building and start earning revenue for yourself and build momentum and then tap into your creativity and build upon the business that you've built. If you're a man, use the body that God gave you. I'm 6'1", 230 pounds. There's not much I can't do concerning physical work, okay? And I, and I charge a good rate for it. Daddy gets paid. Go out and make it happen. Don't sit on the fucking couch. Don't, don't listen to your high school counselor who lied to you and told you you should work in the, in the industry that you're passionate about. Yeah, life's too short. That's fucking bullshit. That's, that's fucking stupid. Especially if the industry you're, you're passionate about is an office job, man. The fact of the matter is most of those jobs are going to people that aren't you and I. Fact. So... Go today, use that fucking body God gave you and work your ass off and build onto it. Because here's the good news. The rest of our generation, the other 80%, they aren't doing shit. They're sitting there complaining about Trump, complaining about Biden, complaining about a trade deal. They don't even fucking know what they're talking about. Complaining about trickle-down economics. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They're complaining about everything. You know what they're not doing? They're not doing. They're not doing a goddamn thing. Thing, and that right there is the reason why, at least in the millennial generation and then in subsequent generations, you will see a vast difference amongst the wealthy and the poor in so much as the top 20% will have crazy amount of wealth in comparison to the 80%. And again, it'll be mainly because people just aren't willing to work. That is a fact. That is a fact. Because again, and I said this before, I'll say it again, you can be rich if you have a three bedroom, two and a half bath ranch home that's paid for, you got retirement set up, your cars are paid for, you are rich. That's a rich person if you have that scenario. 
if you're building towards that scenario, you're a person that's building towards wealth. But when you have people that are literally, they would rather rent, they don't want to own because they like somebody put screwing on a light bulb for them because they don't want to fucking do it. What that means is, is all of the opportunity for equity and wealth is going to get pushed to the top of the 20%, not because of some patriarchal madness. Oh, God. No, not because of that. Simply because someone grabbed their balls and said, I'm going to go to work today. That's the reason why. Don't listen to any fucking story or lie that anyone tells you as to why in my generation, the, the millennial generation, the vast majority of these motherfuckers are going to be broke. It ain't because of some racist, patriarchal shit. It's because 80% of them stayed home fucking reading Twitter as opposed to getting out and cleaning gutters. If you've liked the content, like, share, subscribe. If you've hated it, I don't fucking care. Send it to someone you hate.